In this series, we've been looking at one particular story from God's Word. It is God's intention that when we study stories like this one, we walk away more equipped to do His good works. From the crucifixion story, we walk away more equipped to do the good work of clarifying to the unbeliever the only thing they can do to respond to the gospel message. The only thing that God requires of them for receiving salvation. With this final video, we will take an object lesson point of view to help make its gospel equipping message more memorable and its argument for the unbeliever's only response more sound. Let's begin by taking one step back and rereading the other criminal's final statement. This will help set up the Lord's answer. Then he, the other criminal, said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. So, let's take an object lesson point of view to nail this truth down about the only thing that God requires of any unbeliever as a response to his gospel message as the one way to receive his salvation. This is a cross. Think of it as just like the one that the thief was nailed to, and just like the one that Jesus was nailed to, although his was a little bit different. He had this uh, sign on the top. The sign said, King of the Jews. As he was nailed to the cross, being crucified to death, everybody that was watching could read that sign and go, Oh, well look at that. Here's your King of the Jews. Hey everybody, take a look. This is the king of the Jews. Obviously, it was meant to mock him. Think of this guy right here as the thief, the hardened criminal, the death row inmate. He'd been caught enough and bad enough that he's now headed off to capital punishment. What we want to see using these objects, the lesson that we want to learn and be equipped by, is what is it that he does, what can he do to respond to the gospel? All right, he's the perfect example. That is what is so great about this story. So, let's take a look. So, tell me, in this state, what can he do to earn salvation? What must he do to be saved? Well, he can't go and get baptized down in the River Jordan. Uh, he can't give away all his money. Uh, he can't stop putting quarters in the swear jar. Really, there's nothing he can do. How can he possibly do anything to receive salvation, and yet the Lord told him, tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. What that means is, hey, after I die and go to heaven, you know what? You're going to be there with me as well. The only thing that this guy could do was turn to the Lord and make an expression of faith. In response to the criminal's expression of faith, remember me, after you've been crucified and buried today, remember me when you come into your prophesied kingdom. 
This was an expression of faith by someone who made a career out of breaking the Eighth Commandment and by someone who was nailed down and completely unable to do anything but express faith while being executed. The Lord Jesus Christ, during his crucifixion, who was God and therefore does not lie, promised the faith-expressing criminal salvation that day. Having read this particular story from God's scriptures and following it up with a simple object lesson, how can you and I not be better equipped to make clear to any unbeliever with whom we share the gospel, how can we now not be better equipped to make clear to them the only thing that God requires of them as their response. The only thing that God requires of them to receive salvation. As we share the gospel with them, shouldn't this conversation during the crucifixion be a part of the scriptures that we make known to them? 